Hi guys and welcome back to another video again with Powers. I'm Jake and in today's video guys I'm going to be doing an in-depth look and showing you how to play the Castles of Burgundy Special Edition. Alright, uh, for those of you who uh, know about the Castle Burgundies or do not know about Castle Burgundies, this is the special edition brought to you by Awaken Realms, bringing you uh, deluxified components and really giving you that premium Awaken Realms feel. So what is Castles of Burgundy? Castle of Burgundy is essentially like a dice rolling, tile drafting, tile placement game where you're going to be rolling dice, you're going to be drafting certain colors of tiles which has different effects and using those dice numbers to kind of place them uh, in your duchy or in your player board, all right? And so um, the dice that you roll, that's there's like depots with certain numbers, so you'll be using those to draft the tiles. But today, like I said, guys, I'm gonna be showing you how to play the game. Now look, in this special edition, there is a lot of stuff. It comes with every single expansion in the game um, and a brand new expansion, the Vineyard expansion. For today's video, I'm just gonna be talking about how to play the base game and then I'll be talking about how to play the Vineyard expansion. A lot of the other expansions are just like micro expansions and maybe just add like more boards or more tiles or just a minor uh, component components to the game like shields or really other than that the biggest uh, other expansion that brings in is the trade route expansion um, so I will I will talk about that um, actually as well but let's go ahead and jump down to the table where I got everything set up and to show you how to play Castles of Burgundy Special Edition. Alright guys, so we got everything set up here. Again, just want to give you guys a reminder that the edition that you were looking at here um, is the Miniature Pledge Edition. So I got all of the nice minis and it is the Sun Dropped Edition as well. I believe this was called the Royal Pledge. Alright, uh, so I'm just showing the board right now. I have the player boards down below me off to the side. Uh, but I wanted to be able to get a nice quality look of the board. So let's go ahead and jump right in guys and talk about the setup here. Uh, so the setup of the game is actually fairly easy. You'll get out the board and you'll it's a double sided board so you'll flip it to the side of the player count. So this is a three to four player side on the back is the one to two player side. Alright, once you've kind of done that you'll take all these good tiles here and you'll shuffle them up and you'll create five stacks of five and put them right there. All right. The next thing that you're going to do is go ahead and place out all of these tokens on the board. You'll basically fill all the rows with everything that you need. In a three player version of the game, there is a tile uh, up here or a spot in a depot right here where uh, it's normally going to be a castle uh, tile, but on a three player game in rounds B and D, um, you're going to put a mine there. All right. So you'll go ahead and fill the board with all the respective stuff. You'll put the black bag of uh, the, the black market tiles here in the middle. And then every player will go ahead and collect their player board and all the required resources for a player. All right. So essentially what that's going to be is the player dice. The white dice will be the start player dice, but ignore that for now. You'll go ahead and get three good tiles. You'll get one worker if you're the first player or second player. You'll get two so forth and so on. You get one coin and then everybody will get a castle to put wherever they want to on their duchy, which will be right here. You also get the duchy itself in this nice little uh, hexagon, hex organizer, I guess you could call it. All right, so that is the player board and then you will collect your uh, victory point marker and turn order marker, okay? So you'll go ahead and stack all of those in order. You'll just put the victory point markers there, then uh, determining player order, whoever is on top, whoever is the first player will be on top and then second and the bottom is going to be the last player, okay? I do believe that is everything that you need to do for the base setup of the game. Again, it's nice, simple and easy. So let's go ahead and actually talk about how does Castles of Burgundy work, all right? So the game is going to consist of five phases. So you have A, B, C, D, and E, all right? And within each of those phases is going to be five rounds, all right? So at the start of each phase, what you would do is you would basically wipe the board, clear all the hex tiles off, and then uh, you're gonna put them back into the game box, right? Then one by one, you would go ahead and replenish all of the necessary tiles and stuff. Um, I just got the other ones here, but they have all bags that you could you put them in. You'll replenish all the tiles out in their respective locations, and then you're gonna replenish the central depot of uh, that as well. Then you're gonna take the stack of five goods, and you're gonna go ahead and lay them out face up in the, uh, in the respective 
positions here. It really doesn't matter what order they go in, but you're gonna put all five of them down here just like that. All right, one thing I did forget to mention, when you're laying out the tiles, all the tiles are gonna be laid face up. I do believe this is a change uh, from the previous versions of Castles of Burgundy. I, was, I thought that you would put those tiles uh, face down, but for this version here, guys, um, or I could be wrong. I could have been another game I was thinking of. Um, all the tiles are going to be put face up. So you'll take these five goods, lay them out in this area, and you'll see we are now on uh, round A, okay? Once you have done all that, you are ready. Uh, to, you have set up the first phase, and you are now ready for the first five rounds, okay? So let's go over how a round works and what players can do on their turn. So uh, they, the start of a round, all players will take their dice, and they'll go ahead and roll their two dice to get their result, all right? Then uh, the first player, whoever is the player that is on top here of the turn order board, he's gonna take the white dice, roll that, and whatever result that this white dice is, you will take the top good marker uh, that is over here on the side, and you will put it in the depot of that dice. So we will put this uh, good right over here in the one depot. The white dice is now used and is no longer needed at this particular moment. And uh, these goods are also used to be able to track what round you are on, right? So whatever, however many empty spaces there are on this side of the board, you know that that is your round. Okay, so now essentially how the game is going to work is uh, by uh, player order here, the players are going to take their turn. So the purple player would take their turn, red player, and then yellow player. And then once everybody has taken their turn, you would go ahead and reset uh, reset the round, which is essentially going to be uh, adding the, the next player, whoever is in the highest queue of the player count. They will go ahead, everybody will roll all their dice again. That player will roll the white dice. So let's just say it's a two, and then you would go ahead and take the next good tile and do that, all right? You'll do this uh, three more times until there's five rounds has gone about, and then you would go ahead and get ready for that next phase, right? And like I said, to prepare for that next phase, you're essentially wiping the board and then putting out whole new tiles, all right? So let's go ahead and talk about a uh, player's turn, all right? Uh, within a player's turn, uh, you can take four different actions, okay? So the first possible action that you can take is to take a tile uh, from the board, all right? So based upon what you rolled, we'll look over here, I got a three and a two. I can take a tile from either the three depot or the two depot. depot. So one of these two tiles, okay? Let's just say I'm gonna go ahead and use this three dice and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take something from over here. I'll take these uh, nice little pigs, all right? Whenever you take a tile, you'll go ahead and put it in the bottom right-hand corner of your board in these key spots. A player is only allowed to hold three uh, tiles down here at one time, and so if they ever were to collect one more tile, they would have to discard one of these tiles in order to put that tile uh, into their board, all right? So that's the first possible action that you can take. The second possible action that you can take is place one of these hex tiles in your duchy, okay? In order to do that, you will need to spend the dice um, with that required number and the color of the hex that you're trying to spend, right? For example, I have a two here. There is a two slot right here in the water, which is a blue ship. So I would be able to place this ship right here in the two slot, all right? Whenever you are first placing a tile in your duchy, uh, it has to be adjacent to one of your castles. And then moving forward, you would have to spend and place a tile adjacent to one of those tiles, and it can be any color you want to. So from here on out, right, I could place either here, 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 or here, all right? Um, so those are my available options to me, okay? Now, whenever you place certain tiles, they're each gonna have their own individual effects, all right? And so starting with some of these, uh, we'll go ahead and start with the yellow tiles. So each of these yellow tiles, uh, they're gonna have their own individual effects. And so, for example, this one says, I may build the same building in one town, all right? There's gonna be certain cards, or, or certain tiles, excuse me, that uh, you will only be able to build one building, which is your beige tiles, in a specific group or area. So this area of five squares right here, I would only be able to build, uh, I can't remember what, uh, is this a mine I think is what this is? 
Uh, let me double check to see what that is. So that's a warehouse. So if I had a warehouse in this grouping right here, I would only be allowed to have one of these. I could not have a warehouse there and then a warehouse there and then a warehouse there, okay? But if I had this particular uh, monastery in my area, I would be allowed to have more than one building in the same grouping, okay? So those are the yellow monasteries, all right? Okay, so the next, uh, the next, I'll go ahead and put this uh, tile in my area, right? All right, so the next, um, tile we're going to talk about is the ship tiles, okay? So whenever you play a ship tile in your duchy, you will go ahead and take a look at the depots and select one of them, and you will take every single good tile that is in that depot. So let's go ahead and say I select the number two depot. I would go ahead and place this good in my depot area. Now, if I have a matching good of that type, I'll go ahead and stack it on top of that. There is no limit to the amount of individual, uh, or that there is no limit to the same amount of same goods that you can have, but you can only have three of each different number or color, okay? If you ever were to do this and let's say I got like a one or something, I would have to discard one of those in order to make room, okay? But there is no limit to the amount of I can have, so I can have like four threes right there. But that is the first part of the ship that effect that you're gonna do, okay? The second part of the ship is you're going to advance your marker on the turn order track up by one, giving you that advantage to be able to go first again, all right? If you place your marker on top of another one, uh, you are now the starting player and you will take the white die. So if that space was already occupied, let's say it was there and it was something like this and I wanted to go there, I would now place mine on top and the uh, purple player would now become the first player. All right, the next one we have is a castle. So if you manage to get a castle tile and place that into your board, you basically get a free action of any dice number, okay? So you would just act like you get a free dice with any number that you want to be able to do any of the actions possible. So I could take any good tile I want, I mean any, um, building tile or any tile I want on the board and put it in my warehouse. I can build something from my warehouse in the respective location as long as I'm able to do that. Or I can take any other action related to a dice of a number available to me. So I get a free action for building that castle tile. All right, the next one is gonna be the mine, guys. So whenever a mine goes out into your area right there, and I'm just gonna put this, uh, we'll, we'll move this out here just a little bit. Well, I'll leave it right here. Uh, whenever you place a mine out in your area, uh, mines will work at the end of each round, okay? I, I'm sorry, not the end of each round, the end of each phase. So at the end of that phase, after you guys have played five rounds, you will receive one coin uh, for every mine that is in your duchy, all right? The next thing we have are the animal tiles. So whenever you put an animal tile down, you will go ahead and score points based upon uh, the number of animals in that tile. And if they are same, you can like kind of group them together. So I would put this down and score two victory points for two pigs. If I were to ever get more pigs, that would double. So let's say I had this other pig tile and put that down because they're adjacent to each other. I now score four victory points and you can keep stacking that over and over again. So there's pigs, there's cows, um, there's sheep. Uh, you got sheep right there, there's cows. And I think uh, in an expansion, and another expansion adds in geese, which is like a wild, okay? So that is the green tile. And then the last one is the beige tile or buildings. And so each of these buildings are gonna have their own separate effect. Again, you are only allowed to build one building in a grouping um, of the beige tiles that are available. All right, guys, just some other rules pertaining to grabbing hex tiles. Anytime you do take a hex tile from the board, it must go into your warehouse first. You can never take a hex tile from the board and put it straight into your duchy, okay? And then any of your hex tiles that are already placed in your duchy are permanent. They cannot be moved. They must remain in that spot, okay? So let's talk about additional scoring in regards to your duchy. So when you complete a area here, let's say I complete this uh, monastery area 
uh, right there, you will score points based upon completing that area. So based upon the number of how big it is, so this is a three, uh, three hexagon space area, you'll look over here on this side of the board to your left, and it'll tell you that I would score six points for a three area, you know, uh, uh, 10 points for a four, 15 for a five, you know, 36 for up to an eight area if I had uh, one of those available. And then, depending on the round you are in, you will also score that many points. So if you're in the first round and I completed this three area, I would score 10 points plus an additional six points, okay? Uh, the first player to complete all of one color on their board. So if I had, well, I don't have those any more yellow tiles. Well, actually I do. So if I completed both of these, okay, I have now completed all of the yellows. I would then take this marker right here, signifying this bonus point tile that I have completed all of the yellows, all right? And then again, when you complete all the blues, you'll take whatever tile is available to you. So that is the actual hex tile scoring and how that works. So the next action, the third action that you guys can take is selling your goods. So you can sell the goods that match one of your dice. So let's say I rolled a three here on this dice. So I will be able to sell all the goods that I have that had a three value, all right? For every good sold this way, you will gain one silver, okay? You will gain one silver uh, from the bank, and then you will score victory points based upon the player count. So in a two-player game, you get two victory points for every good sold. Uh, three-player game, three points, and four-player game, four points for every one of those goods uh, sold. All right. So that is the uh, action of selling a good. All right. The final action in the game is to take two worker tokens uh, just from the supply. So you basically trade in your dice to be able to take two worker tokens. Uh, these worker tokens, guys, will be put over here on this side of your board, and they are used to either increase or decrease the value of a die by one. A six can be moved down to a one, and a one can be turned into a six, and you are allowed to use as many workers as you need uh, to get the desire that you want. So you can spend three workers to move something up three or down three. So that is the final action available to you. Okay, in addition, to your two action uh, dice. You can also buy a tile from the Black Depot in the center uh, of the game right there. That can be done anytime during your turn. And to buy a hex tile, you will need to pay two silver coins and you basically move that tile uh, from, oops, you'll basically move that tile from the Black Depot to the empty space in your board as always and now you have the Black Depot tile, all right? There is no distinct advantage between the uh, Black Depot tiles and the normal tiles. They're gonna do the same thing. It's just the Black Depot tiles are gonna have an out access, give you the ability to get that outright if you cannot roll that specific number, all right? Like I said, guys, at the end of five rounds, you will go ahead and enter the phase. Players would now, at the end of the phase, so once this was all out, boom, 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 all right, the, the last everybody's taking their turn. Now we get to the end of the phase. All players would gain one coin for every mine that they have in their duchy. Uh, you know, yellow monasteries might give them something at this point in time now. And then you would go ahead and start the next phase by wiping the board and putting new tiles out. And then you would take these and line them up just like this, all right? So that is how that end of the phase would work, all right? The end of the game ends at the end of the fifth phase, and essentially uh, you will add in the additional number of victory points available to you. So any unsold good tile that you have left in your board is gonna be worth one victory point. Each silver coin left over is worth one victory point. For every two workers you have, that's gonna be an additional victory point. And then you would do the yellow monasteries, Oop, you would do the yellow monasteries and their scoring uh, for these additional uh, victory points. All right, guys, well, look, that is uh, how to play Castles of Burgundy, uh, all of the actions and things available to you on your turn. I hope all of that made sense. Um, it is a fairly simple and easy game, and so now I just wanna take the opportunity to continue to go through some of these little expansions that they have and what they are going to do. So a couple of the other expansions that they have 
are just adding in uh, new duchies. Um, some of them are going to add in like extra, like a shield expansion where uh, what the shield, uh, these shield tokens are going to do is if you happen to roll doubles, instead of using, you can use both those dice to go ahead and put one of these in a castle slot there. And this will give you an ongoing bonus effect more than likely. But you'll have to pay a silver in order to keep these um, in your area. All right, so that's the shield. Another one is they just give you more duchy. So let me go ahead and grab this whole stack of duchies available. You guys can see this whole stack of duchies that they have just bringing in different, uh, different maps and different ways and shapes that they um, that these duchies are gonna take, just giving you more options um, and freedom there, all right? Uh, one of the other expansions available to us guys are going to be the Trade Route expansion. So based on the number of player counts, you, uh, you will get like two or three Trade Route cards and you're gonna go ahead and put these uh, right next to your board. And whenever time you sell a good, instead of going it into like a supply for goods, you would go ahead and put it over here and go ahead and to get that bonus if it matches uh, this specific. Well, I don't have one that matches, but so it'd be like this tile right here. So I would sell this three and cover this spot up and be able to get that particular bonus. And then once all of these spots are filled, then now anytime I sold a good after that, I would just go into a general supply, all right? So other than that, the other mini expansions that they have available to you, just add in extra small tiles, and um, and extra small tiles. I think there's you know like white tiles and uh, other stuff like that. All right. So now let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and clean some of this stuff up. Let's go ahead and talk about the vineyard expansion. All right. So we have the new vineyard expansion. And I'm gonna go ahead and try and bring it over here without breaking it. I'm gonna put it in the middle of the table here. So this is the new vineyard expansion with the uh, the nice sun dropped version. So it's bringing in these grapevines. All right. And so this is what the board would look like uh, from the top, and then here's the bottom area that you have. This is kind of like the market board. Each player is going to go ahead and get one of these additional boards and they will add it to the side. Okay. Or, or you can put it to the front, however you want to, you know, you can have it like that or over to the side. Um, I believe it's meant to go on the side um, of their, of their duchy there. And so it's going to add on and look something like this. Okay. And basically what the vineyard expansion is going to do is on your turn. Now you have another available option to you of I'm going to go ahead and like lay this down so you can see that. Okay. So now you have another option that based on the dice number that you have, you can take one of these uh, grape tiles or vineyard tiles, right? Whenever you take, again, as always with these vineyard tiles, they're going to go in your warehouse. Now they do take up two spots. So if you have two spots full, you're going to need to discard the, uh, you're going to need to discard one of these tiles in order to make room for that. And then what you would do is when you had the option available to you, you would go ahead and place one of these tiles in your vineyard area. So if you have a four or a one, you could go ahead and place it just like that. And you have to start left to right because on these smaller areas and place uh, place there. And then you'd be able to place adjacent off that. All right. And then the again, you would get all these double bonuses. There's double bonuses for each of these. You'll get all the bonuses for each tile place. Now the scoring with the vineyard expansion, how that's going to work is based upon the little vines that you get. You'll have opportunity to get these small bonus vine tiles um, based upon the adjacent or clumps of that you have in a row, you'd be able to score points. So if I had something like this and I had the red, uh, the red vine instead of the yellow one, I would be able to get bonus points uh, for scoring that. All right. And so you can continue to clump them together and make things adjacent, but you have to have this bonus top. So like if I had yellow, the only yellow that's available to me, I believe is this one out here. So I would be able to score points 
because I have the bonus, right? If I don't have the red, doesn't matter how many red I have, I'm not gonna be able to score those points. You'll be able to get extra bonus tiles once you complete an entire row, so, or like section. So I've completed both of those sections, I will now be able to draw another bonus tile from the bag, right? When I completed this entire section right here of number two, uh, just like that, I would go ahead and be able to draw another bonus tile. So it gives me more options um, and more opportunities to get more of these to go ahead and score more points. But that is essentially the vineyard expansion in a nutshell, guys. All right, well look, that is uh, Castles of Burgundy, the special edition in a nutshell. I'm sure there's some stuff that I left out or I didn't explain too much in detail. Again, this is a really long video. I'm trying to make these how to plays a little bit shorter and more concise. So if there's anything that I got wrong or I made a mistake on, please go ahead and drop it down in the comments below so I can go ahead and pin it there. As always, guys, I hope you like this content. I hope this is very helpful helpful for you. And as always, if you are not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe so we can keep making more awesome content for you. All right, guys, y'all have a great one. Bye.